Leadership is a hot button issue these days, but leadership comes in many forms, including leadership from someone who is perceived as a bully. Our next guest works specifically with those people. Welcome executive coach and author Jordan Goldrich. Hello, Jordan. Hi, Lisa. It's a great to be here and it's great to see you again. Well, Jordan and I, of course, go we go back quite a ways, but I want to talk about, I've always found it fascinating, your work in particular, because I think in this day and age, like I alluded to at the beginning, leadership is such a hot button issue. And I feel like there's a lot of people who work for someone who they would consider a bully. And oftentimes those bosses or managers don't really see themselves that way. How do you rectify both of those things? Oh, that's interesting. So, you know, I was one of those people. I uh, grew up in a loud New York family and which was loud by even New York standards and developed a very direct communication style. And somewhere along the line, I lost a job as an executive because of it. And I, I really didn't understand how I was affecting people. Uh, I, I, part of it was cultural. My family was just loud with each other. I felt like I was just talking. Mm -hmm. So very, very often they, they are not aware of the impact. Certainly in an organization, they, they're executives. So you don't want to look at the executive and say that was rude, particularly mm -hmm. if you're blo below them. So people don't tell them what's really going on. Mm -hmm. um, so you talk specifically to these people in your book, Workplace Warrior, and I love, I love the title, Workplace Warrior, People Skills for the Noble <laughs> Executive. I love the title of this because I think it really speaks to that group yes. of people because oftentimes, especially leaders who rise to that C-suite level, to political leadership and, and you know anything above that, they see themselves as no nonsense, get the job done, but they don't realize their impact perhaps negatively on yes. the people they supervise. Yes. And, and they do get some feedback. They get some uh, pushing, some pressure to be a little bit more polite, a little bit more protective of the people they're talking to. And very often they experience that as political correctness rather than that they can't be authentic. They can't be who they are. So you're absolutely correct. Well, how do, but then how do they do it? How do they then continue to lead, be authentic to themselves, but also be kind and respectful of the people that they're managing? I mean, I imagine that's what you sure. do when you're coaching sure. them. Yeah. So usually in order to get them there, they have to, if you're, if you're like me, you need a little bit of a smack on the head. So usually something happens along the way where somebody files a complaint or their boss gets really tough with them or human resources or, or what have you, and they realize they need to do something. And one of the, the key issues is that my experience of these people is that they don't want to hurt people. Mm -hmm. They are just really, really driven by success. Mm -hmm. And so part of my job when I work with them is to help them get underneath and look for what I refer to as core value. Simon Sinek calls it your why. Mm -hmm. But is there something underneath that that would make them want to change, even though it feels like they're being pushed to be inauthentic? And almost always there is. Uh, okay. I want you to just now flip that on the other side. And how yes. do people that perhaps have a boss um, who they think pushes them around or doesn't treat for them respectfully, how does the, the subordinate in that culture deal with a boss that is – Expl uh, showing sure. that type of behavior? Yeah, great question. I, I, I think there are several pieces to it. The first piece is to see yourself as a target rather than as a victim. Mm. So if somebody is shooting something at you or directing a certain kind of communication at you and you experience yourself as being victimized by it and hurt and wounded, it's very hard to deal with it. If you realize that it's not your issue, it's how they're talking. Mm -hmm. And there are some opportunities here because many of the people who do get that directed at them want to be executives. They want to be promoted. So it's an opportunity to learn. There's a lot of people like that out there. Right. So right, it's an right. opportunity to learn and grow. And I'd say the third thing would be that they have to separate their self-esteem from how other people are talking to them. Mm -hmm. And that is a big deal in our day and age when we have this thing called microaggressions, which are real and they're nasty, 
but the communication that I've heard about them is that they wound you and there's nothing you can do to get over them. And, and really, I think we all need to get to the point where our own self-esteem, how we feel about ourselves is not dependent on how other people are treating us at the moment. Gosh, I mean, in an ideal world, Jordan, that sounds awesome, you know, but I, I think for the people on the receiving end of that, that might really be very diff- a very difficult step. It is a very difficult step. And, and despite the fact that I am one of those no bull- executives and I've been experienced as abrasive and rude and all of that, strangely enough, I still have to fight that battle as well. There are times that people are rejecting me or ignoring me and I have to really work on not feeling personally attacked by it. Right. Okay. So not only do you have the book, which is a great read, a very easy read. It's good to read, quite frankly, on both sides. If you are that person that is perceived as a bully and as the person perhaps who feels like they might be the target of that bully to just kind of get in the mindset of the, the people that they're dealing with. So not only do you have the book, but now you have a podcast as well. I have a podcast. How exciting. So tell us about what's happening with that. Well, the podcast will be announced very soon certainly before this is aired. And um, it's called Workplace Warrior, People Skills for the No BS Executive, because you can't put something with the word bull onto uh, uh, Apple. (laughs) So uh, I've had to clean it up a little bit. Um, And hopefully you're okay mentioning, with my mentioning, that you're going to be one of my guests. Yeah! I'm excited about it. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. We've already recorded the episode and I, and I think it's a really cool, and I appreciate you, of course, asking me to be on the show, but right. I, I think the book is a very, again, very interesting read and the podcast, I'm very much looking forward to it. Of course, people can find you at jordangoldrich.com and your book is still available. Yes. My book is still available. It's on Amazon and uh, jordangoldrich.com or workplacewarriorinc.com. All right. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. 